NBA playoff scores 2017, are the Celtics the worst? No. One seed in 20 years? Three series resume Tuesday, and all three featured road teams that picked up Game 1 victories. However, in two of the three Game 2s, order was restored and the higher seed salvaged their slow first round start by evening the series. The Los Angeles Clippers and the Toronto Raptors take those honors, as both beat their opponents and head on the road tied up at one game apiece. The outlier was the Boston Celtics, who became the second first overall seed to ever drop their first two games against a no. 8 seed. The last time this happened, it was the 1993 Phoenix Suns, who dropped consecutive matchups against the Los Angeles Lakers in a five game series. But Charles Barkley led the Suns to three straight wins, and the Suns actually represented the Western Conference in the finals that year before losing to Michael Jordan's Bulls. Three times since 2000, no. One seeds have actually lost in their first round matchups the 2012 Bulls, when Derrick Rose was injured in the first game, the 2011 Spurs, beaten by a feisty Grizzlies team, and the infamous 2007 Mavericks, who won 67 games but just couldn't figure out Golden State. Are the Celtics the worst of those group? Perhaps if they lose, but there's still time for Boston to climb out of this hole. Here are some thoughts from the three games from the SB Nation staff and blog network. Celtics fans can't believe this is what it's come to. Only a week ago, Celtics fans were celebrating an unexpected clinching of the no. One seat in the Eastern Conference. It marked an enormous rise for Boston, and set them up against the seemingly dysfunctional Bulls. And then they lost the first two games at home. Here is Celtics blog's Jeff Clark. This is all emotion talking. Not a lot of in-depth analysis tonight. Just need to get this rant off my chest. Take with the appropriate grain of salt. A lot changes in a game doesn't it? I was confident, cocky even, this morning and now I've never been more frustrated in a Celtics team. I don't say that lightly. I've been covering this team for 13 years and following them since the mid-80s. There have been better teams and worse teams, but none that set me up and let me down more than this one. This is a team-wide fail. Players, coaches, management everyone gets a share in the blame pie because there's plenty to go around. Toronto did what they needed to do in the short term, win. Basketball is more than wins or losses, but a single game can be viewed in binary terms. The Raptors were either going to beat the Bucks on Tuesday, or they were going to lose. They desperately needed a win, and they got that in a 106-100 victory. If the Raptors had fallen down 2-0 in their opening two home games headed to Milwaukee, the series would slant dramatically in the Bucks' favor. They have essentially set up a five-game series where the Bucks now hold home court advantage, but in this situation, that is all you can ask from Toronto. Kyle Lowry, whose postseason struggles have been well documented, was excellent on Tuesday. He scored 22 points on 6 of 12 shooting, plus a dagger step-back jumper despite excellent Malcolm Brogdon defense. The 106-100 Raptors win over the Bucks ties the series up at one headed back to Milwaukee. This is going to be a dogfight, and the Raptors don't currently look like the team that some were calling a dark horse for the NBA Finals. Still, all they needed on Tuesday was a win, and they got that. Playoff Rondo back. Rajon Rondo who began the year in the starting lineup, ended up being benched, got in a spat with Jimmy Butler and Dwayne Wade, starting playing as a backup again, and finally ended up back in the top five hasn't been better all season than he was in game two. Playoff Rondo is here, folks. The Chicago Bulls dismantled the Boston Celtics Tuesday night, marching their way to a 111-97 game two victory. They became the second no. 8 seed in NBA history to take a 2-0 series lead over a top seed, thanks in no small part to Rondo. Yes, Butler and Wade finished with 22 points each. Hell, even Robin Lopez tacked on an efficient 18 points. But it was Rondo who led the way for Chicago from the opening tip tallying 11 points, 
14 assists, 9 rebounds, and 5 steals in one of his finest outings of the season. This was some vintage stuff for Rondo, who brought the lethal combination of energy, aggressiveness, and flashiness that he once used to torture opponents. Chris Paul made damn sure the Clippers didn't lose. Paul scored a casual 21 points with 10 assists on 9 of 15 shooting Tuesday. His postseason failings are infamous and widespread at this point, but as has been the case in many previous shortcomings, you can't blame Paul for Los Angeles splitting the first two games. Paul is averaging 23 points on 56% shooting, 10. 5 assists, and 3 steals to open the postseason. His game may first have been slightly better, in Game 2, he helped pick up the win with a few clutch shots down the stretch. Maybe Paul will fall off, but early on, the beleaguered Clippers point guard isn't messing around at all.